Welcome to learning about atomic structure. For this video, I'm going to be going over these definitions very quickly. So if you want to record my definitions, definitions, you're going to need to pause the video right now and write them down. The bulk of this video is going to be going over the isotopic quantities or how do you fill in these tables that have specific uh, content that you're going to need to be able to be uh, proficient at. So first, let me just quickly go over a really quick overview of these terms and, and what an atom is. And then we'll get into the actual example problems on the next page. So again, pause the video if you want to write down my definitions. So an, this is just a atom, okay? You can have whatever favorite element you want on the periodic table that create all of matter, okay? So this is the nucleus, so you write nucleus, and it's got protons and neutrons, and together they're called nucleons. It is a very tiny but massive center, so a lot of people will call it dense. And then because protons are positive and neutrons are neutral, they'll call it a positive dense center. The electrons can exist in these energy shells or energy levels is really how I, what I call them. And if the electrons are in their what are called stable ground state, they can exist all the way out to energy level seven. Our largest atoms have electrons out to energy level seven. The energy levels are not equally spaced. That is a very common uh, wrong thing I see all over textbooks in the internet. If you have, let's say, a helium atom, okay, and then this is one of the helium isotopes, so we would call this one actually helium-4, okay? That means that it has a mass number of 4, which is the neutrons and the protons, so that means in the center, right here, as you can see, there's 4 total nucleons, 2 protons, which make it helium, and 2 neutrons, which make it a specific isotope of helium. Because we're talking about neutral helium, we are talking about the fact that it has the same number of electrons as protons, okay? So again, mass, uh, mass number, sorry, is protons and neutrons. You've got atomic number is the number of protons. And if it's a neutral, meaning there's zero as a charge, it's the same number of electrons. The other thing you can see is this is the generic form uh, for just this one example, okay? The abundance of helium-4 is really, really high. There's a couple isotopes for helium, but really this one is like 99% abundant. That just means that's the predominant form of helium you'd find. All right, if helium was to gain or lose electrons, then it could become an ion. Um, and then the last thing is the atomic mass is the weighted average of all the naturally occurring isotopes. So if you look at the periodic table, helium's mass is not directly on 4. It's a weighted average. So this is the atomic mass, and this is the atomic number. All right, last but not least, um, Avogadro's number. Now, why did I put that in here? Well, because when we get later on in chemistry, the atomic mass, what you're going to use is something called grams per one mole. To have a mass that we can measure on a scale in lab, we need to have about one mole of those atoms or ions or particles to get to um, a mass we can measure. And that number is 6.022 times 10 to the 23. That's the number of particles we need. All right, let's get right into the practice problems then, okay? So I'm going to go through uh, the hydrogen isotopes first, and then I'm going to get into just a random amount of different atoms and ions for us to practice, okay? So if you take a look at these three isotopes, the nucleus is extremely enlarged, so that's easy for you to see. So what we're saying is we have hydrogen, so that's going to be um, H, okay? And what you would do is you put the mass number in the upper corner, okay, in the upper left corner. So I just want to make some room here. So you put one because there's only one nucleon, and then there's only one proton, and then there's one electron because we're talking again about neutral uh, helium, okay? And we're talking about the isotope called hydrogen one, also called protium. So there's one proton, one electron, no neutrons, atomic number one, mass number one. And this is the most abundant version of um, hydrogen. If you look on the periodic table, you can kind of see here that the weighted average is just a little bit above one. That's because we do have two heavier isotopes, but not a lot of them, okay? Especially the one. So the deuterium isotope is still H, okay? That stays the same. We're still saying it's, it's a neutral, it hasn't gained or lost electrons, but it's gonna have proton number one because it's still hydrogen. It's just a different isotope of hydrogen. And so the mass number is two total, two total nucleons. One proton, one electron, one neutron, atomic number one, mass number two. Trace amounts of, or sorry, not trace amounts, that's the next one. About two, you know, 0.02%, which is helping us get a little bit over one for the weighted average. Okay, next. And that's a separate video. That's our third page of our notes. So then the last one is one and three. Proton's still one. Still talking about hydrogen. It's 
what makes it, it makes it hydrogen. If you had two protons, you would now have helium. So we're not changing the proton count here with an isotope. That stays the same. Same electrons, so we'll say that there is, hasn't gained or lost any electrons, and then it's going to have two, one for the atomic number, so you can kind of notice that these two are the same, and the mass number is three. This is the one that has trace amounts. So let's make a little summary kind of right in this little area right here is how do we do protons, neutrons, electron count? So protons, I think, is the easiest one. Go to the periodic table and find the atomic number, okay? And then that would be right here in the upper left or right or right centered over the element symbol. Neutrons, how do we find neutrons? So if I want to find neutrons, I take the mass number. Now, the, this is a, another mistake I see a lot. This is not the mass number. This is the weighted average of all the isotopes, sort of mass numbers, and their atomic mass units. So this is not a mass number. This 1.008 is the atomic mass. You have to be given the mass number, okay? Kind of like in the picture to the left here, okay? You have to be told that. Um, so what you do is you take the mass number minus the atomic number. So let me just do this. Proton plus neutron minus proton, voila, is neutrons, okay? So easy little algebra problem there. All right, electrons, now life gets a little complicated, not at first. If it's a neutral atom, meaning it has not gained or lost any electrons, then you're just gonna say that it equals the proton count, which is the atomic number, okay? So for that's why for our hydrogen right here, it was one every time. Now, if we have ions, I'm just gonna put a little disclaimer here. So what if we have these things called ions? You can make what are called negative ions, and you can make positive ions. Here is something else I want you to write. Now, I'm not gonna write it because I don't have room, but you write it. When you have an ion of an element, the protons stay the same, okay? The only thing that changes is the number of electrons. So electrons change, not protons. If we're talking about, an, you know, let's say, I'll just use hydrogen as an example, okay? So let's just use the normal hydrogen, one and one, okay? When I'm talking about it being zero, it's not an ion, at least yet, okay? We can gain or lose electrons. So let's do a negative ion. So that means it has um, gained electrons, or gained a electron or more. And what happens is then the uh, proton stays the same, but the electrons go up. So what you would do is you take the atomic number, and then sort of like I just tell students, kind of add in that value of the charge. So for example, if I had H1 minus, then I would say the atomic number was one. It has a one minus charge, but it's just really the one, okay? And so now I have a total of two electrons. And that makes sense if I gained an electron, this is why I'm starting with this one, that I have one more, okay? In this case, I only had one more. All right. If it was a positive ion, so let's just even do this. There is the hydrogen ion. That's the most common hydrogen uh, ion. You would take and have, um, there is a loss of electrons, one or more. Now, in this case, it can only lose one because it only has one. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the atomic number, and you're going to kind of subtract the charge this time. Now, don't use the value. I mean, sorry, don't use the plus or the minus. Just use the numerical value, okay? So what I mean by that is take your atomic number and then subtract it from the fact that it, it lost one electron, and you get that there are now, you're, it's not a joke, there are zero electrons. So if you go back to hydrogen one plus, remember, it only had one electron. So if we now have the hydrogen ion one plus, it has one proton, no electrons, no neutrons, atomic number one, and mass number of uh, one. So it is, um, a lot of times people will just call this a proton, because if you look at the, the, the list there, that's all I have left, it's just a proton. Okay, now that's kind of a special, special case. All right, so let me kind of fill in how the practice problems are gonna go. So what I'm gonna do is just fill in specific boxes of the examples here. And I'm only gonna probably get through, it looks like maybe six or seven, and then I think that'll be a long enough video for this. So I'm gonna put in what maybe we know, okay? So what do we know? So let's just do that helium four. Let's just start with that. And let's make it easy. Let's make it have a zero charge. Let's start with kind of something that we just saw. Then let's do another one where we know there are 13 neutrons and 12 is the atomic number. And we'll say zero for the charge. So let's stick with you know atoms first, not ions. 
How about we use some element that's got the symbol F, and we want to say it because I want us to look it up, 9 and then 19. So maybe we know that, and we know that again, that one's 0. And last but not least for the zeros, our, our atoms, we'll do one other kind of combination, which is this one. How about we have that, okay? Then let's do at least two ions. I'd like to do more, but I think this video will already be long enough, okay? And then neutrons is 20 and negative one. If I fill this out wrong, um, hopefully you're writing in pencil because I hope I'm not making a mistake, but if I do, I'll have to fix it. So 23 and then plus one. Now that leaves kind of four more, but that might be great for us to go over together some other time. Okay, so how in the world are we gonna fill in the rest of this table? So take a look again at our little summary here. And remember, my little cheater thing here for the positive and negative ions, a lot of students don't need it. But if you do, you can kind of use my little, my little cheater method. Just remember, we do, you don't actually put the plus and the minus in there. Um, you actually just use the, the number, the one and the one, okay? And we'll have to do some other examples that might be twos and threes for pluses and minuses. Let's go, okay? If you think you're ready to do this on your own, then pause the video and just fill it in yourself and see if you get them right, okay? If not, let's go through them, okay? So I'll go kind of slow here, but not too slow because we can't have this take too long. So helium is right here. Now, I didn't have a table that I could create. This is actually one that I made um, that would fit um, the name besides. So there's helium. So that means the atomic number is two. The atomic mass, which doesn't show up at all in this chart. So really, this number is not going to help me at this point. Just black it out, okay? So it's really just the two and the HE that are helpful. So let me zoom, zoom back out. Here we go. So you put HE for the symbol. 2 for the proton count and the atomic number, and 4 for the mass number, because I was given the mass number. That's what's um, in the uh, name, okay? All right, proton count is the same as the atomic number, so we go 2, 2. You're going to see that that's a fast way to fill in this chart. Next, electron, same right now, because we're going to see we have helium with 0. It has not gained or lost electrons. Neutron, I try to do easy math here for us. We don't need a calculator, so it's just 2, because you're going to take 4 minus 2 is 2, remember? that the neutrons is the mass number uh, minus the atomic number. So you could do the mass number over here, okay, which is 4. And we take 4 minus 2 gives us 2. All right, uh, let's get to another one. Okay, what element could this be? Atomic number 12. So let's zoom into the periodic table. And they're in order because that's how the atoms are on the periodic table. However, that's really not the only pattern there is. Wait till you learn more chemistry. It's so exciting. So you've got magnesium is the winner again, and we need the 12, okay? So that was what we're looking for. So let's zoom back out. There we go. So we're gonna say the proton is 12. Um, the electron is 12 because we're dealing with Mg that has no charge. We're gonna call it magnesium, not manganese, be careful, it's magnesium. And then we knew that the neutrons was 13 and 12, so that gives us a total of 25 for the mass number. So we'll go 25, and then we'll do um, 12 for the atomic number. Boom, done. Look at that, two down. Oop, almost, and then 25. There are other isotopes of magnesium. There's two others, and I think that this one is only about 10% abundant. I think that 24 is the one that's highly abundant, like 70, 80%. All right, moving on to the next element, though. Might as well get as many as we can. So F right here, it is called fluorine. Atomic number nine, here we go. So we've got atomic number nine and it's fluorine. So let's just write that. So fluorine, I mean, that looks kind of bad and that's gonna slow my video down, but that's okay. Uh, you can always play it on a higher, faster speed, 19. Again, mass number is what goes there. Okay, that's telling us the specific isotope. Let's do the easy ones, right? Nine, nine, and since it's a neutral fluorine, it's not an ion, can we nine electrons? I did easy math for us, right? So again, 19 is the mass number. Why do I switch colors? There we go. So what is 19 minus nine? I did this on purpose. I want it to be easy for me too. And you get 10, no calculator needed here, people. All right, next one, let's keep going. We have a proton of 47. So we gotta zoom in. Who are we talking about? Which wonderful element of 118 elements are we looking at? And what did I even say? I just forgot now, 47. Here we go, uh, silver, woohoo. Okay, so silver is AG, it's got 47. And let's go back out and see what we can fill in. So let's write silver. And then we know the mass number is 107. Okay, we got that. Let's do the easy ones, 47. We're saying it's silver. It is zero, so we have not gained. We have not done with an ion yet, soon. 
And then what would the neutrons be? Again, I tried to do easy math. This might push it a little, but it's 60, okay? So if you take 107 minus 47, you get 60. All right, we're almost done here. We gotta do 47 and then 107. Okay, finally two ions, and then I think we'll call it. Here we go. So we have a electron that has been gained, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go, well, that means this is 18 because I have gained an electron. So remember, the atomic number, and then I have one more electron, so I have uh, 18, not 17. So I've gone up by one, okay? Atomic number still stays the same. So whatever element is 17, that's this element. Let's do the mass number right away. That's 37, because you just add your uh, protons and your neutrons. Now let's go look for who is element 17, or what element is 17. I went right over the top of it, hiding it. There it is, chlorine. Um, so we're gonna write that down as the name, and the symbol is CL, lowercase l, okay, chlorine. And then we're gonna say it's chlorine 37. C, lowercase l, don't do capital. Remember, elements either have one symbol that's capitalized or one symbol that's capitalized and one that's lowercase. Yes, we are that picky as chemists. Do it right, okay? 17 in the lower left, um, and then we had 37 in the upper corner there. And then this where it's different, you might want to even put one minus. Now, later on, we're actually going to call this a chloride ion, but for now, let's not worry about that some of the names of the ions change. You could just do this if you want to say chlorine 37, you could just say ion, you know, if that, one to, if that helped you know that's not the normal chlorine. One more to try, here we go. So there's a positive charge. And we have a uh, mass number of 23, a neutron of 12. So I don't think I've given you one like this. So if you subtract those two, you get 11 for the atomic number, okay? So if you subtract 23 from 12, you get 11. That's actually the atomic number this time. Let's go in and find the element and it is sodium, so Na for sodium, not tritium, that's why it's called Na. So sodium, we just call it sodium, and then 23, English speaking, and then we would put Na, and then 11, and 23, and then it's an ion, so we'll put plus. We could say, again, you wanna say ion. It actually would be called the sodium ion, that wouldn't actually change. The metals names don't change. Proton would be 11, and then remember, we lost an electron, so then the, we go down. Now, we did not go down again in proton count. Protons stayed the same, we went down in one electron count, okay? So if you think of it like a little math problem, you have, I'll put it underneath, actually I'll put it right here. You have 11 protons still, so it's like 11 pluses. Now we have 10 electrons, which is 10 negatives, if you do a little math problem like that, you end up with a plus one. So that's why chemists up here will put that the charge is plus one. All right. Well, I hope you can um, you know solve some more problems and you've got the definitions back up here. So let me go right back up and just kind of pause for a second. And if you haven't wrote down the definitions, you can. And I hope this video helped you. And again, atomic structure is super important. Everything around us is made of atoms, and the matter that we um, kind of exist in, or us. Um, are made up of these beautiful atoms. There's 118, I think of it almost like a paint palette of colors of atoms we can put together to make compounds and molecules, then get them to react and all kinds of other fantastic things in chemistry. All right, good luck chemists.